Welcome everybody. Nice to see everybody here today and I'm delighted to be able to share with you this morning. And as Melanie said, this, this ongoing series about change, about transition, about going through tough times, of navigating the rocky road. I know the first time she said that I thought, rocky road, let's go get ice cream. <laughs> you know, that'll change everything. So that's, that's one of my favorites. But I wanted to share something with you before I actually get started on the talk. Uh, Melanie had a reading this morning and I, I really loved the one piece of it that says about fire and the energy of fire and, and when things are happening, it causes proper things, proper matters to burn. It causes the proper things to happen. And to, to me it's like life. To me when things are happening, all that's really unfolding to me is already divinely ordained. Is unfolding so perfectly and can we follow along and step in time with that. So we're talking about transition. I just want to share this with you. Given that life itself is inherently transitional, I don't know why I segment one slice of it and call it transitional. Don't we do that? Do we ever really look at life and say it's one big transition or do we go I'm going through a really rough time right now, I'm going through a transition and, and we specify it. So I think this is a, a really wonderful way to give it a little bit of a different perspective. People wait for things to end so that things can begin. But well, when you think about life, isn't it always, isn't creation always an ending and a beginning? It's really ongoing. And how we choose to see it and to use that moment, to use that experience to transform our lives, to me, I think is such a key component of how we walk that journey, how we navigate the rocky road, the smooth and easy places, or the sometimes those mountains that seem insurmountable. When people wait for things to end so that things can begin, this is living in powerlessness. I suffer because my belief system validates suffering. When was the last time you examined your belief system to see if, if that's what it does? Does it support like suffering is just, you know, what I'm supposed to do? What is it? Suffering is, what, inevitable? but growth is optional. So what, again, you choose to do with it as you navigate your path. The process of making the exchange between suffering and love, perhaps life's most difficult path, because only in pursuit of my most or your most cherished illusions am I so utterly willing to hold so firm to my misery. Isn't that interesting? That comfort zone when we're afraid to take that next step. Just like the song when she was saying her friend is in Fort Worth now and there's, there's some fear or trepidation as, as to what, what is coming. And so how, how do we look at that? By the way, Fort Worth isn't such a bad place. I was actually born in. So it can't be too bad. <laughs> can't be too bad. <clears throat> to surrender these illusions means that I'm willing to be touched and changed within my being. Did you notice that key word? I am willing. I am willing to take that step. I know one time I heard, if you're not living on the edge, you're taking up too much room. <laughs> so come to the edge and in that place, step off. To me, that's when you get your wings. That's when you allow yourself to be supported. And you say, yes, I am willing to take that step because I know in the deepest part of me, in the core of me, that I'm going to be just fine. I will get through the fire. I will make it through that next moment. Because my belief system validates and supports a universe and a presence and a power that always has my best interest in mind and at heart. <laughs> I want you to really pay attention to this next statement. There is tremendous power in the experience of pain. There is tremendous power in the experience of pain because we want to push it away. We want to run from it as fast as we can, whether it's physical, emotional, spiritual, the angst and the anguish, we push it away. If we can understand what is really happening and it's just energy, then again, we have tapped into 
a different resource, a higher mind of a different understanding. As we navigate the rocky road, as we walk through the fire, we're going to be okay. And we can allow ourselves, just like the song, to be in that embrace of grace, of goodness, of something higher that we know is going to carry us through no matter what. No matter what. That's the good news. Because we can hear about the hard times, we can hear about the difficulties, but what, what is it that we glean from all of it? <clears throat> Hopefully it's something that we, another skill we've acquired, or an insight or wisdom to carry us through the next step and the next phase of our ongoing evolution. If I am willing to live free in the face of this power, I will begin to comprehend that this is the same power, the same power that is designed to bring me the experience of joy. Your joy is your sorrow unmasked. It's all the same. It's how you choose to look at it, how you choose to work with it, and how open and willing you are to say, I'm ready for a different experience to know the truth of who I am so that my light will shine, so that that flame within me will shine brighter than ever. And all of us together, as we hear about all these things happening in the world out there, that together we can have that collective torch, if you will, that shines a light that we can pass into a phase of peace and love and compassion and understanding. There is no moment in time when my life or your life is in it may feel that way in our human experience, but it is always complete. The divine influence that seeks to bring me into wholeness is now flowing into my life. I cannot create a moment in time when my existence fails to be sustained by the thought of God. Isn't that just wonderful to know that at any moment you can say to yourself, no matter what I'm going through, no matter what is happening, this is what I'm going to choose. I'm going to allow myself to let go of tomorrow and my concerns and my fears and my anxieties, and I'm going to let go of what I think I didn't do yesterday or beat myself up about, and I'm going to commit to being fully present in the here and now and to access my point of power in this now moment. I think that is just so wonderful and such a gift that we can do that as we choose to. So the difficult and uncertain times when it feels like we're getting burned or scorched or being tossed about. I, I was thinking about this talk and I was wondering, how could I bring something into it that could even give you a visual? And perhaps a lot of you are familiar with the mythical bird, the phoenix. And when you think of the phoenix, what is it that comes to mind? There's that Mantra rising, exactly, rising out of the ashes. It's eternal, like you, like me. And we continue to go through these experiences, and like the Phoenix, actually I was, when I was reading about this, I, I wasn't aware that as the Phoenix is going through its ongoing death and rebirth, which is what I believe we do, it sets itself on fire. The nest in which it is in, it sets it on fire because it is ready to die unto the old way and to continually be reborn and rebirth. And I think that's such a powerful metaphor. And in different cultures and religious faiths, you will find the phoenix as the symbol. It's looked at a little bit differently because some cultures actually look at it as a divine messenger. So again, when you're on that path, or you're going through the fire, to know that you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. You're going to make it. Since my house burned down, I now own a better view of the rising moon. This is a quote from Mizuda Masahide. And when I saw that quote, it took me back to 2005 when the house that I was living in burned. It didn't burn to the ground, but I lost, I didn't have any renter's insurance at the time, and I lost pretty much all of my physical possessions. But what was most important to me was my precious eight-month-old Shih Tzu puppy that died in this fire. And 
And my life, I can tell you, I, I don't think I would have had the grace and the elegance to say, woohoo, now that my house is burned down, I have a much better view of the rising moon. I don't think so. <coughs> I, my faith was shaken more than it has ever been because I was like, you've got to be kidding me. My little puppy, what she represented to me, I named her Lovey, by the way, what she represented to me was not just this eight-month-old little being in a furry body. I had already been through several years of very difficult times, hard times. To me, she was my new beginning. This little puppy with that puppy energy that could make me laugh, the unconditional love, all of those things that I was like wanting to be immersed in. And when I lost her, it was like, oh my God, how can this be? How can this be? Because of what she represented to me. She was a new beginning. And the way in which it all unfolded was, in, in the human sense of it, was very tragic and traumatic. Because that day when I put my key in the front door lock, because the garage door did not open, I thought it was a battery that was malfunctioning. The smoke knocked me down. You could not tell from the outside of the house. And like us, at times the life gets smoky and, and foggy and hazy, and we're walking into something and we're like, what do I do? And you feel your way around, because that's what I did. I started screaming, I was frantic. And I ran into the house, and I couldn't see. And I was <coughs> coughing and choking, and I dropped down to my knees because, what, what have I heard before? You get down so the smoke is up here, and hopefully you can see it didn't make any difference. And I was just in a state of shock, frantically trying to find my little puppy. Two times around, just by feeling around the wall, and I kind of remember the kitchen. I hadn't been living there that long, and feeling the kitchen and into the living room, and I could not find her anywhere by touch. So I came back around again, and I had an area for her with all her puppy bedding and all her toys and everything, and I kept doing this, and finally I realized what I thought was a comforter was her limp body. So I picked her up, and I ran out of the house. So those moments in your life when you're like, oh my God, how could this, what or this is, be happening? What do you do? What do you do? I didn't know what to do. I was so in my humanness. So I ran out into the front lawn and I just started rocking her and screaming, crying. Have you ever been like that? When something's going on, and you're like, oh my God, I'm like, what do I do? You're right where you are. And that's what I mean. I can look back on that now at other times, and I know we can all get together and share awesome stories and say, you know what? We're not just surviving, folks. We're thriving. We have made it through the fire. Literally, figuratively, we all go through the death and rebirth. I can look back on that experience now. I understand so much of what happened. And the humanness of it, would I want to redo it? Not no, hell no. <laughs> but would I go through the experience of cracking open the shell and the places in me to let in the light? To go through an experience that may scorch you or scar you or burn you? So in the core of you, you can heal those wounds. And the most amazing thing of all, when we go, oh my God, there is no God, but we hear what? That God is everywhere present. No matter what is going on, God is in the middle of everything, yes? Do you always believe that, no matter what? Have you had a moment when you doubted? Anybody in here ever lost their faith, even for a moment? So I'm, I'm sitting there, and I'm in, of course, this, this other place. I don't know where I am. And I'm rocking loving. And I think my body was facing down the street. And no kidding, no joking. I'm just looking, and I'm not really seeing, but I kid you not, coming up the road, I see a man in a white coat and a collar, in a black coat and a collar. It's a priest. And he's walking towards me. And I thought, 
thank God, maybe I've already died and gone to heaven because I don't know how to do this anymore. That's for sure. I want out of here. Beat me up, Scotty. I was in so much pain and angst. My world was shattered. And all I can vaguely recall is him coming and kneeling down beside me in the grass in the front yard. I don't remember what he said. All I know is he prayed. Imagine that. He left, and the firemen were all over the place and all of that. And there's more to this story. One day I've got to put it in a book. Because thank God for the beautiful Marriott Fire Department. Those guys were awesome. But what I'm saying to you is, when you're going through those moments, what do you do? Hopefully they won't be as traumatic and tragic, but sometimes they just might be. They just might be. Understanding, again, the element of fire. Understanding transition and knowing, in our world, we hear about all the forest fires. I know I had a friend of mine who was in the Southwest and going through forest fires. But fire, again, it can be creative. It can be destructive. It can bring something beautiful into our life with a beautiful fireplace, the warmth that it offers. Yet it can consume you. It can wipe out and obliterate acres and acres of beautiful nature and trees. But what happens after that process? Life springs eternal, does it not? Underneath the rubble and the actual composition of this substance, life springs forth. And we may not know what is yet to come, but we are called to say, okay, I believe, in the face of uncertainty, in the face of not knowing, am I willing just to let go? And know that every step I take in this direction on my path will always be guided, no matter what, no matter what as you go through the rough times and the rocky times, that there is something, because you are of that. You are that very essence. And when you believe differently, and that's okay if you do sometimes or as often as you want, when we believe differently, we hold on to something different, it's because we are scared. We are fearful. And it's easy to feel separate. But we do it anyway. Because that is what I believe one of the reasons why we came here. To have that human experience so that our soul can expand. So that we can truly connect with one another in our commonalities, in the moments of going through the fire, and truly know oneness, and be able to reach out a hand and open your heart and say, here, let me just hold the space for you to know that you are going to be okay no matter what. I want to share just a brief story with you. How many of you ever have heard of Chris Carr? Okay. She's a well-known breast cancer, not said breast cancer, cancer thriver. And roughly 10 years ago, Chris Carr was diagnosed with a very rare form of cancer and was given about 10 years to live. And they really didn't know what to do with it. And basically, her body was so full of cancer, and what would be required would be to transplant just about every organ that she had. But they thought, well, that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because within the lining of her tissue, there was still cancer just throughout her whole body. So she changed her diet. She went vegan and raw and did all kinds of things. Excuse me. Tissue. And started doing all kinds of different things to, you know, boost her immune system and do all the things that, that folks try to do. But she was really committed in a different kind of way. Because chemo didn't help, radiation didn't help, nothing was helping. So she was diagnosed on Valentine's Day. So every year on Valentine's Day, she would have another scan. So over 10 years, this constant fear and anxiety and uncertainty, what are the scans going to show? What are the scans going to show? For 10 years, no change. There was no shrinkage, yet there was no growth. It stayed the same. 
Okay? And then finally she, she decided, huh, I'm, all, I'm in this fear all the time. I'm in this uncertainty all the time. How else can I approach this? Maybe there's another way. So she decided to be open to letting her fear guide her. And it pointed to her, what, her resistance. It pointed to, what, her tendency to, to do this to cancer, to push it away. Well, why would you want to embrace cancer? Who would want to do that, right? Because it's an energy. But again, when you understand energy, when we can truly embrace things, things that are really difficult and hard, it changes everything. Because we are not this physical body. We are so much more. We are pure vibration. And so is fear. It's an energy. It's a vibration. So when we meet it head on, and we look at it, and we say, hello, fear. Welcome. Come on in. It's just like the Ruby Guest House. Welcome in everything. And celebrate it. What it has to offer you. And let it pass on through. And what it will give you is something so beautiful. So she decided to let go of her attachment to finding a cure to her cancer. Does this smack of what my talk was a while back when I shared with you about Anita Marjani? After everything she went through for four years and finally she said, I'm letting go of needing to fix this. I'm letting go of needing to find a cure. I'm going to surrender and just let it be. And I'm willing, there's that word, I'm willing to thrive in the face of uncertainty? Are you willing to keep walking your path in those moments? Are you willing to go through the fire even though you don't have a clue what's to be? Are you willing to surrender to something greater than you and say, okay, here I am. The 11th year, she had her scan. Do I already need to tell you what happened? For the first time, her tumors began to shrink. For the first time, on the 11th year, they began to shrink. Free. I'm free. We know fear is like a prison that we put ourselves in. And trust me, there is no judgment there. I've been there many times, and I know I'll still be there many times. Because like you, I too am a work in progress. And sometimes I look at it and go, oh my gosh, I've got to do some overtime here because there's a whole lot of work to do. But you know what? That's okay. That's okay. Because I'm willing to say, I'm going to do it right here in this now moment. And not try to get ahead of myself. Or try to figure it out. Or try to make it happen. I want to allow myself to be guided. And to lean into something greater. To lean into that embrace. That feels really good to me. That embrace of grace. And just lean into it. And allow that energy to move me forward and upward along my path. So how about you? What about in your life? What are you willing to do in the midst of uncertainty? Taking a breath is a really good thing. Being just willing. And if you get anything out of today's talk in going through the fire, I think is to be willing to be open to be willing to say, yeah, I want to do this differently. Because I know that my life has meaning. I know my life has purpose. And I'm here to be of service. And when I'm of service, then this vibration on this planet that I believe we all signed up for this time to come together, there's no coincidence that all these faces are here today. To me, I believe it's by divine appointment. We all chose to be here in this moment, in this space and time in this reality. So at any moment, <clears throat> allow yourself <coughs> excuse me, to see life differently. To be willing to look uncertainty in the face and say, it's okay. Come on in. We're going to have a great time together. It's going to be okay. <coughs> so let your light shine. Let those flames ignite you 
sometimes we need to light a fire under our butt, if you will, our spiritual barrier, to get us going. And to <clears throat> be gentle with ourselves and say, I'm willing to forge ahead. Because I know there's so much that waits for me. <coughs> I still apologize. There's so much that waits for me. And there's such an awakening that I am here to experience. So, through the fire, breathe, breathe. drop down to your knees, where you can see, and you'll make it through. <coughs> yes, please. I so apologize. I think this fire energy is starting to stoke <coughs> my fire here. Here at One World, you know, One World has gone through a lot of its own transitions, and it continues to do so. And so each and every one of you, I challenge you to take a look at where you are on your journey, to allow the fire, the energy of fire, to clear away what you're ready to clear away. Maybe it's time for a burning ceremony, a burning bowl, whatever you need to do, because we all do it differently. But as community, to where we can truly be that light to shine throughout the world. And to know that through every transition we go to, go through, no matter what is going on, there's always good news. There's always something to celebrate. And you become what I believe, you're not just become brave, you're beyond brave. And you have a courageous heart and spirit that will see you through any experience. Thank you all. And that's